It is Mary Blocker with Mary's Card Cafe. Hello, hello. It is my four o'clock Pacific time that I do a Facebook Live once a week, and I'm so glad that um, anybody joins me tonight. I had, um, I have lots to share, a few cards. We always have lots of fun together. Um, I've been involved in Stampin' Up! for probably about 25 years, if you can believe that. And I have just built so many friends, so many wonderful friends and relationships, and that's really what it's all about. Hello, Miss Betty. Thanks for commenting. Welcome, welcome. I'm going to put this down right now because I had put out a thing. Oh, I know. It is so beautiful out, Nichelle. Thanks for stopping and... I try uh, during my uh, work time. Hey, Cindy. Oh, Cindy, I want to let you know your um, new annual catalog will be coming from Stampin' Up. You are on my list to get um, one shipped, so they'll be it'll be coming from them. Hey, Kathleen from sunny Florida. Okay, we are in sunny Washington right now. Hello, Miss Judy. Welcome. Well, you guys, we are going to get started. I had put out a thing last week about a mystery stamping. And uh, my, I had put out a thing about some clues and then said, use these clues to create a card and send it to me, whether you upload it, email it, put it in the Facebook post. Then I would reveal my card. <clears throat> hey, Vicki. Hey, Linda. I would reveal my card at Facebook Live today, and that's what I'm going to do. So um, I didn't have any cards come to me. Hey, Jolene. So no cards came to me, but that's okay. You can go ahead and try the uh, the sketch challenge that's going to come out on Friday for the month of April. Um, it's going to have to do with inspiration, so you'll really like it. But anyway, so for this one, it was using a card base, standard 5.5 by 8.5, a, a DSP layer as your layer, 5 and a quarter by 4, and then the job was to use any layering dies. Hey, Tina. Thanks for sharing, Michelle. Um, using any layering dies um, to create a stamped image onto it, stamp a sentiment directly on the card or cut it out and add it, add ribbon, ribbon or another embellishment, and don't forget to stamp the inside too. All right, so here is my cute little snailed it card. Isn't he cute? So sweet. Now I do have to confess I didn't stamp my snail and I didn't stamp my sentiment. I die cut them out because if you don't know, the Snailed It Designer Series paper is so fun. You can't even believe it. I absolutely love this Designer Series paper. And the dies actually die cut out some of the snails and some of the um, mushrooms. And so how fun is that, right? So this is the snail that dies, the snail dies, and it cuts out several of the snails, but you get hearts, you get a little envelope maker here, We've got this fun uh, frame, square frame, and there's that mushroom I was talking about, it's so cute. Um, and then of course the stamp set, these mushroom, this mushroom right here, I just love this. But anyway, so it is part of the retiring products. And um, what I also did, so here's my, uh, the, the designer series paper was my four and a quarter by five piece. And then I did my nesting dies, the um, stitch nesting dies, which are a mess in my little container here. But there are so many of these wonderful nesting dies. And another thing that people don't notice in these dies, let me just show you. Let me just grab it. In the nesting die dies, there's also this piece right here, which is just a straight line die that's going to give an embossed look. And um, sometimes people just overlook that part. So anyway, what I did is I used three of the layering dies, the layering stitch uh, labels, and I actually then did it one more time, as you can see, with the same size so I could glue the DSP right on top. And then I have my little guys and the guys there. This um, baker's twine that's stitched, whoa, wow. <laughs> Kathleen, that's awesome. Hey, Mickey. 
Wow, Christmas cards, working at Christmas cards. <laughs> I'm part of the pets, um, the little pets uh, bundle. It's a little combo pack of twine. And then stamp in the inside, don't forget. So there's my little mushrooms. And I colored these with Stampin' Blends. Um, and remember I told you very much so that Stampin' Blends does bleed through your cardstock. So this works perfect because I have it layered onto a um, Bermuda Bay piece of, of cardstock. So that was my mystery stamp project. You could have used any stamp sets, any papers, any colors. It's just kind of following the generic instructions on creating and this is what I did. So I'm gonna try a mystery stampin' again another time. And and people may have time to go ahead and participate and submit little cards and stuff using those clues because it would be so fun to see. Oh thank you, Mariah. Hi Shar. It would be really fun to see the different um, creativity that people have and all the different kind of stamp stuff you've got. Because you gotta use what you have, right? So there we go on our mystery stampin'. So that was fun to make. I really love the snail dip products. A couple of things I want to just let you know about. Double loyalty bucks is something that's been going on since the beginning, or end of March actually. Double loyalty bucks ends tomorrow, tomorrow night. So if you have any orders that you'd like to do on retiring things or the clearance rack products and you want to shop with me, that's just great. Um, I do have a hostess code that is tied to that. CA9YKG2F and so that just ends tomorrow that means you'll get two loyalty bucks for $25 orders um, instead of one so my new catalogs have arrived and I had a post out about if anybody wanted me to mail them one now all of you who have shopped with me before um, Stampin' Up! is sending you is mailing your catalogs to you and you should be getting those I've actually um, gotten my orders that I ordered and I can mail out catalogs so you can message me um, you can go back to my post about getting a catalog mailed and fill out the form and then it's time to book your own party or join a club in May or even maybe become a de demonstrator um, just saying some good things are coming and um, it's always great to be a host hostess and even if you're not local we can always do it hey, sh hey Colleen we can always do it um, just as an online end and, and do host host codes like that all right I want to show you a couple more things you guys remember um, seaside notions was a stamp set that I really liked and that's going out I want to show you this card this card was made by a stamping friend of mine her name is Anne Marie Turner, and she made this underwater window card using the Seaside Notions. How cute is that? She used the stitch rectangle die here, and then using the foam strips and the window sheets, and then she put her sequins in there, even did some stamping on that. This is designer series paper there. But isn't that just the sweetest? And then she added this inside. Hey there, Miss Colleen. Did I already say hi, Colleen? I think I did. <laughs> so yeah, so that's just really great. If you've got sequins at home, this is a great use for them. So that's just a, one I wanted to share with you. And then I wanted to share just a few more ideas. Um, remember how I said I absolutely love that confetti flower punch, border punch? Yeah, there you go. Um, and then Jolene asked a little bit about that corner bouquet where I have just a couple of cards utilizing the corner bouquet. Not in a, but she's showing just little bit differences. And then it was, was it Cindy who told me she needed help with the whiskey business stamp set? Well, here's a couple here for you. This is one that I had done. And then this is one that stamping friend Ann Quatrain had done. So that's just some more ideas for you guys on a few little things that we've talked about that I thought I'd pop back in and show you. Yeah, so there's just a couple of ideas, Cindy. This one was really cool. So we st stamped it on, um, on vellum and then, um, then the, we used a, like kind of the, different stamping blends and actually not on this one because I didn't make this one. Oh, I know what this person did. They used the copper foil and then they stamped the jar again in copper foil 
<clears throat> with probably stays on and then cut it to, to, to add on to here and then they have it just right on the designer series paper. This is the one, my sister-in-law and I did this one and we used stamping blends to just color in the, the alcohol there. So that was fun. So those were a few I wanted to share with you. Kind of follow up on a few little things that we've talked about. And then I wanna share with you something that is just really lovely. And that is kind of the silhouette stamping. So this particular card was done using the Friendly Silhouettes dies. That's these dies here. There's the tropical trees along the beach. We've got some little dragonflies. We have some cattails. And then we have this, this die right here was used to do this. And what's really nice is putting that ribbon along there that kind of just caps it off. It could have also been down below. And then this was actually done out of designer series paper and just punched out of the two and a quarter inch circle punch. So that, that design was already there on it. Isn't that pretty? I love silhouette stamping. And so um, Anne Quatrain made this one too. I can't take credit for it, I didn't make it. Yeah, the alcohol looks so real, it sure does. <laughs> hey, Bobby. Oh, let me just take a look if, it, if I'm saying hi to people. Okay, all right. So yeah, so the Friendly Silhouettes is a die set that is discontinuing, it's retiring. And I'm just thinking how fun this Tropical Trees would be to be on with the Timeless Tropical Stamp Set. Um, that's really great. So that's something for you there too. Now, I want to do a little bit of my own silhouette stamping. So I wanna share with you, um, I'm gonna do a couple of projects today that utilize some, I, I have two already in my pre-order products, two particular bundles that I am just going ga, 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 ga over out. Um, the colors that I used, uh, Cindy, on those, use things like cinnamon cider and use a little, like a little, another little orangish color one. I'll, I'll try to go back and remember. Hey, Tammy, and then I'll let you know. These are the dyes they're called meadow dies. And what I did is I die cut them all out so you can see all of them. And there's these little leaves right here. Those are three separate little dies so you can do three leaves at a time. These are phenomenal. They're just gorgeous and beautiful. I am going to tell you though, you need adhesive sheets for these. Another thing that I don't know if you can see it on here, I'll lift it up. Thanks, Tammy, for sharing. I'll lift this up um, and we'll see if it'll show. I have to just wait to see where I have my camera. Ah, can you see the embossed part of the butterfly? The butterfly has embossed wings. They, they build up. So that happens also with this butterfly right here. And then this little tag as well. They have raised up um, embossed parts on them. The label has stitched around the label. So these are just so beautiful. So I'm going to do a card with this today. All right. And after I do this card, I'll show you the next one. But let's take a look at our Quiet Meadow stamp set. It looks like this. And then you saw the Quiet Meadow dies. Now, my inspiration on Friday, you guys, my blog on Friday and my video for uh, YouTube is using this particular um, bundle because my bedspread, my comforter in my bedroom, I absolutely love it. And I realized the design all over it is very similar to these. And I thought, oh my gosh, that's like the most perfect inspiration right there, right? <laughs> so anyway. I love this set because it has that antique vintage look and of course we're going to talk about my dots because I love my dots. All right, I just can't help myself you guys, I love my dots. I just love, love, love them. Any kind of dots, all kinds of dots. So let's see what we have. Let me get out my materials here. So I'm glad to hear that people are talking about um, sunny days where they are. Our weather is very sunny still chilly in the morning, about 40s in the morning, but we're getting up to 60, uh, 60, 
62, 60, whatever. Although I've still been wearing a sweater in the house because the house is chilly. Um, anyway, okay, so I've got some things. And I'm going to tell you guys, I already die cut out my pieces because I just wanted to save time. <laughs> I just want to save time. So I did the pale papaya, one of the new in colors for the uh, sentiment tag. Here is my one silhouette. I love this one. I think this is like my favorite one. And I have my adhesive sheet on the back. Here's the other one. This is my next favorite one. And then my pretty little butterflies that have those embossed wings. Those embossed wings are just so cool. Oh yeah, I can't believe it's still snowing over in Michigan, Tammy. That is amazing to me. That is just amazing. All right, so I'm gonna set these things aside. I need one of my pieces here. And I'm going to first use this. And we are using new in, in colors. We're using the um, e Evening Evergreen, which I wanna take a minute. And any of you that have these uh, stamp pads, there is the back side that has the labels on them. It says Evening Evergreen, and then it has it in different languages. So the idea of this, and maybe you already know this, is that you're gonna pull that off and get rid of that. And then you're gonna take your English speaking one, if you're in, doing English, and that's gonna go on the end of your pad right here. Try to get it straight on there. There we go. Then there's one here that's just plain with nothing on it. You'll want that one too. So the ones I don't want, I'm just gonna peel off of here and rid of them. And now I'm gonna take this plain one. Oh, Kathleen, oh, gotta run for dinner. Yeah, I know. And then that just goes right on this inside flap. So as soon as you open it, you know that color that you have there as well, okay? So this is my evening evergreen, and I'm going to tell you this is a very deep and dark, 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 dark. So I am going to be stamping off, and I have to decide if I want to stamp off once, twi once, twice, or two times. And I'm going to come in and stamp just like so. Just want a light, pale, um, you know, I'm not going to do it on this piece. I'm gonna take that back. I want to do it on my vanilla piece. I need it on the vanilla. <laughs> I'm still like, why does that seem so light on there? Well, and with this piece, it's kind of hard to know which is which is uh, upright or not. It does have a, a right side, so I'm just gonna come down a little bit more. Stamparatus would be okay to do on this, but because I'm doing it back and forth this way, and it's not quite gonna, uh, what's the word I'm gonna say? It, yeah, it's the step, the going down the ladder is good. But then I'm gonna take the flower piece here, and again, that's so dark, I'm gonna stamp off once, I'm gonna press it right there, come in again. I'm going to do another down here. And one right there. So I'm just building a, um, a background for myself. My next color I'm going to pull in is the pale papaya because it's so fun. And the pale papaya is going to get the dots. You know it. But take a look. Pale papaya is very bright. So I am going to stamp off because, again, this is kind of an antique, vintage -y idea of a card. So I'm stamping off each time. That's one way that I can get some really great um, shades, different shades of color with just one stamp pad. No, um, Cindy, you don't have to store your stamp pads upside down because see when it's open? When I close it, it flips over like this and the pad is already upside down. So the ink will already be on the top. Does that make sense? So you just store it like that. Okay. 
All right, now that I've done that, we are going to find our pieces here. Makes it so lickety split when I've got my pieces already cut out, right? <laughs> The first one I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one. Now, sometimes in the dies, there's little bits and pieces that need to come out, and you would use your tool to do that. You don't need to do that. Um, when you're using adhesive sheets, they generally, when you're pulling your adhesive sheet backing off, sorry, my adhesive sheet was split, um, it, will, it will pull right off and take out those little, little pieces. I guess I had a little split in my adhesive sheet in a couple places. So I'm going to lay this down first. My mat always seems to move on me, you guys. And so that one is laid down and in place. Then I'm going to bring this one in. And you just have to kind of flick with it and then it comes, the piece comes right up that you can just kind of pull along. I go really careful carefully along here because these dies are, I don't want to say fragile, but they're delicate, right? They are delicate to get all those details. So you just want to be a little careful, especially with that guy right there. Sorry, when I was putting my adhesive sheet down, I was using smaller pieces to use them up to cover my cardstock. And then this guy's just going to kind of lap, overlap and lay down right here. There we go. I'm going to take my little butterfly right here. Just love how they're in, the wings are embossed like that. And he's going to just kind of fly right in there. All right. Then I'm going to use my evergreen, evening evergreen. That'll be for the inside. And I'm going to use the Thinking of You stamp. I'm just going to stamp to make sure my ink's getting on there well. There we go. One shot of that, right? The rule usually is stamp and then die cut or punch. <laughs> but you know how that goes. All right. Now it's just time to assemble things, but I am going to do a little in the inside. Let's do that first. I'm going to do a little of my dots. I know it's already gorgeous, so thank you. Thank you. It'll get better. And again, I want to be careful. I don't want my dots too bold. I'm just going to give a corner of a dot right there, dots right there, because I'm going to take this big butterfly and just kind of flick along here till it separates. Uh-huh. And it was split there too. And now that's all sticky, and I don't have to get my fingers all nasty with glue. All right, it's just time to put this together. I have my pale papaya layer that I'm doing, and then I also have that pale papaya for the inside, so we're just gonna put this right on. Yes, it does come in as a bundle, Jolene. Um, the, the Quiet Meadow at the 10% discount bundle price, it's a $53 bundle. You get the Quiet Meadow stamp set and these um, Meadow dies. They code it. That's the bundle price. If you were to buy just the dies, it's $38. Well, the bundle's just $53. So, right? Of course you want them both. <laughs> oh yes, love the new colors. Well, I want to let you guys know my blog post today um, is all about the new in colors and I have an in color club that begins in May where you can purchase one set of the in colors, the cardstock, the stamp pad, the refill, which you need. Um, the Stampin' Blend Combo Pack, and the Ribbon. And you'll do that each month. Place your order by the 15th of the month using the Hostess code. And then once you've done your five months and you have your five new in colors, you get to choose $20 of free product, anything. 
and you also get a package of the new in color gems free as my thank you so that will begin in May and I have my blog for that and there's a form that you can fill out to say that you want to be part of that it's a pretty darn good deal to get $20 free it's kind of like being your own hostess one of the months and that's gonna go right here boop, 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 boop. and then I'm gonna use the genial gems as you can see I've already been using them because I love them love 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 them and we're gonna put one here I decided to go with the um, this color here because these this is the soft succulent and I didn't use soft succulent so that wouldn't make any sense to do that so I'm gonna put another one over here and then one I'll put another one just down right here the other thing I'm gonna do for this is I'm gonna grab the Wink Stella because I want to show off the butterflies um, embossed wings so I'm gonna just come in and do a little Wink Stella right here if you don't have Wink Stella there's something you need to go ahead and order Use that hostess code. Order a pack of paper, note cards, or envelopes to get your $25 order and earn some loyalty books. You need that. You need adhesive sheets. <laughs> right? There we go. So a little little bit of a little bit of deepening there. You can see that now on the butterfly, I think. And I'll do that right here on the inside. Just getting his embossed wings. There. Now you probably can see that pretty well. So cute. So there we are. That's the Quiet Meadow. That's one of the sets bundles that I'm just a little gaga over right now. I think I'm going to uh, design. I'm doing some in color cards for card swap that I'm, I've joined with some demonstrators. And I already have my soft succulent figured out, but I could do another one and do this in the um, just all pale papaya. That would be kind of cool because it has to be when you do the in the in the monochromatic in color swap, you have to use just that color. You can also put in a white or a black with it, but that's the thing. Okay, that was card number one. That was that awesome, awesome. Quiet Meadow upcoming. Let me set this aside now. We don't want to mess mess our other project. And my cleaning pad is over at the sink. I washed it really good and I left it there, you guys. Well, thank you, Cindy, for thinking it's awesome. Okay, all right. So, okay, you guys. This is the next thing I'm gonna tell you that I'm totally, totally in love with. It's the Hand Penned Petals stamp set. And the bundle, oh, sorry, I gotta just grab the, the thing. And then the dies that go with it are these. These are called the penned flower dies. Here's our beautiful little intricate one. That, if you notice, there's other dies of flowers here that you can do a different color and then place them on top of those if you want it this beautiful scallop border. We have the other flowers and leaves. And then actually this die, if you stamp and color this one, it die cuts it out. It just looks flat here. And then this actually is the one that goes around this one. So this is the pen flower dies and this is the hand pen petals. Now, the genial gems come with this suite of products if you get the suite. And the other thing that makes this so awesome is this designer series paper, you guys. This is the designer series paper. Oop, I think I'm missing a sheet in here. I am missing a sheet. Well, you get the idea. <laughs> we have these beautiful florals with like the, the Highland Heather and um, Misty Moonlight. We've got the pale, um, pale papaya. Uh, 
it's just beautiful and then the other side is so soft and pretty and just girly and I can't I'm just I'm in total gaga over it so we are going to be creating a card using this today and I'm going to be using some stamping blends to color my flowers because Jolene had asked a little bit of that oh I know this DSB is great so also I do have a design uh, paper share that's happening for the new annual catalog which some of you participate in and you get your samplings of all of the papers that's in the catalog that are new that's the specialty papers the designer papers all of those um, you get and you get a sampling you'll get two each of six designs for each of the papers um, and it's a great way so I also have a blog post on that that you can join that uh, and get a sampling of all the papers without breaking the bank I just like to do that for people so okay so this is my next one. I gotta move this basket out of the way you guys gotta keep myself kosher here okay there we are so now in addition to the hand penned petals and the penned flower dies that I'm gonna use I'm also gonna pull in another die set and this is the scallop contour dies the scallop contour dies go with the color and contour stamp set so this color and contour stamp set is kind of interesting. It's very similar when you look. It has a bit of likeness to these together. It's kind of interesting. I hadn't thought about that before till just now. But anyway, what I'm really utilizing out of here is just the scallop rectangle die. You have your die for your flowers, um, but then it's all of these different scalloped um, rectangles so I'm very excited about that so that's what I'm using for that just to let you know okay so let's take a look at what we got here I already have some things going on so again the magic of of a video I already stamped that one flower from the stamp set this one here and then I went ahead and I die cut it out I usually would color first and then die cut, but you yeah, know, um, it just works fine. And then this is what I mean by the scallop rectangles. I already went ahead and used one of them from the uh, contour dies. And here is the, oh my gosh, here is the most beautiful, sweet designer series paper. It's just gorgeous. And you know the artist, the Stampin' Up! artists all hand paint these. They hand paint everything they design. Is that amazing? I have the soft succulent that goes right with it. This is soft succulent in the designer series paper. And then the misty moonlight, which is the misty moonlight parts there. So it just is so coordinated. It's just beautiful. And then I have a course for my inside. And then I might need a greeting that I need to do because I haven't really finished designing this card. I know that's going to go like that and that's going to go like that. And I'm okay with that being a little bigger than the rectangle. I wanted the designer paper to really stand out, right? So let's talk about our coloring. I went ahead and I pulled. And I got my, look at it, just opening them. Brand new, you guys. The pale papaya. Woo! Throwing things around. And soft succulent. And then I'm pulling in the fresh freesia. But I gotta make sure before I do that if that's really what I wanna do. Because that might be Highland Heather. Yeah, I don't want the fresh freesia, you guys. I need to go grab my Highland Heather. Because that's Highland Heather, it's not fresh freesia. Hold on a second. So fast, so fast. Look at that, got them already. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna talk about our Stampin' Blends. I'm going to take the Dark Soft Succulent, okay? And with that, I'm just going to come into the leaf and I'm just gonna draw along where those lines are on the inside of the leaf and then I'll bring my Soft Succulent Light and I'll come in with that. 
just get my stems here. Okay, now once I've done that, if I feel like I want the dark soft succulent to be a little bit darker, I'll just go back in, do a little more, and let it stand out like that, okay? The other thing you can do is you can just come in with your lighter of your Stampin' Blends, color the whole thing in, then bring in the dark, shade that darker part in. I'm actually going to shade down here even a little bit more, saying that shaded. And then right there, I don't have to do anything. I don't need to blend. I don't need to. I could come in here, though, and do that a little bit. But I feel like when I come in the second time with that lighter color, it obviously deepens it up so much that I need to come back in and give that just a little more, more depth. And there it is. And that just looks beautiful. Maybe I should come down a little bit closer so you guys can really see that. Let's see if that's just going to scare me now. <laughs> Let's see where that ends up. Whoa, it was like I'm underwater. That was wild. So I'll do that again where I'm just going to do, I know this is going to be shaded dark in here. I'm going to do that and then just come over with my light. So I'm starting with my dark one that time. And then I can come back in with my dark even a little more. But I blended that in to deepen it up. There we go. Notice I'm just doing one little leaf at a time because the Stampin' Blend does dry and the whole idea is that if you want to blend your colors, it may dry. Be Oop, I just did that the other, I just did that the wrong way. Oh, this is supposed to be my darker color. Isn't that funny? And now my lighter color. So it's having both my uh, Stampin' Blends in my hand. I'm going to even come in with the dark here along the stem. Give a little shading going on right in there. Come back in a little bit. Give a little bit more deepness here. And then you can see how easily that happened. So now I'm going to go with my Pale Papaya. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just color everything with my light. Remember with the Stampin' Blends, you don't want to push your tip down. You just want to let it glide along. I was actually starting to push my tip down. That's why I said that to remind myself that we don't want to do that. Just glide it along, glide it along. The nice thing about it is when I go back over a spot that I've already colored, it just kind of deepens it in. And so there you have that. No, isn't that pretty? Well, not, not yet, right? So we want to think about where are the, dark, where are the darkness going to be. It's where the petals are sunk in, and then the other petals are on top of it, and they're going to kind of bounce a shadow down into those crevices. So that's where my things are going to get the dark, the dark pale papaya, <laughs> if that makes any sense. The dark pale papaya. Now this one might have a little shadow right there to it, but really it's all that in there. The ones that are right here, they're going to they're going to be the lightest. They're not going to have And so can you see there the differences that I have now? So as you look at this one and the flower of the pale papaya, you might say, well, we might want to we might want to um, blend those edges a little bit more. I can come back in with the li uh, light pale papaya. I like using my brush tip, though. And then I can kind of soften, soften those a bit. Ooh, that's pretty. But now we'll go ahead with our Highland Heather, dark Highland Heather, and light Fresh Frasia. No. <laughs> light Highland Heather. There we go. All right. I'm going to do the same thing. 
I'm going to go ahead and use the light to color the whole thing. But I'm going to leave that center because that center is going to be dark. Notice how I go back again. It's just deepening, getting a little bit darker. Oh, my little doggie's barking at us. She's saying, hey, you left me down here, upstairs, you guys. So then I'm going to come in, and I'm just going to do those lines. And if anything, I'm going to get a little darkness up here just from this flower overhanging it. So I'll give a little more dip depth over here but I want to leave the rest of my flower light. Maybe a little bit right there, okay? Now I can go back over with my light and see how though it's deeping it, up, deeping it up quite a bit and I'm actually losing that dark Highland Heather. So I need to make sure I go back and come in and deepen those areas just again. And Stampin' Blends are so smooth. So this right here is I'm using Thick Basic White. And now when I turn it over, you can see how it's bled through. Um, basic White that's not thick isn't, isn't great to use with your Stampin' Blends. It just bleeds through too much. And it'll also bleed out over your lines, actually. The Thick Basic White is really good because you won't get that bleeding outside the lines. But Shimmery White is like perfect. Shimmery White's really good. So there's my flower, just looking beautiful, isn't it? Oh my goodness, look at those colors. I did pretty good on that, if I say so myself. I'm just gonna come out just a little bit, you guys. I'm kind of freaked out by the phone and how close it is to the mat. Okay, sorry, I had to get a drink of water. Now, I had run a Stampin' Blends Tic-Tac-Toe Club a while back, hi, Robin. Yes, the colors. Look at this color combination in that paper. It's just, it's just stunning. I, I don't even know what to say. All right, well, I am going to, oh, I know. I am going to use some ribbon on this today. And I'm going to use the, I thought about using the new um, soft succulent in color ribbon. This is the ribbons that you would be getting in the in color club if that was part of what you joined. Um, they're beautiful. That's kind of like the dotted tool ribbon, how it doesn't overtake your card. The problem with it is I want the ribbon to show a little more and I don't feel like that does. So I am going to use the crinkled white ribbon because it's going to really stand out. So I'm going to move that because I'm going to actually do it around my, around my um, thing here, my rectangle. Gosh. I can, I can figure out the words that I'm trying to say. Really, I can. Okay. There we are. I'm doing it nice and long just so I can. And I'm going to have this go about right here. We'll see how this turn is going to turn out. I'm not too sure. Remember how I always turn it around after I've done my first knot to do my bow? That just helps my bow go the right direction. Oops, and if my, my, my big fingers would do what they're supposed to do, I make my loop. I really can. I like to do this when the rectangle is like already adhered to something and just turn around the whole card. Just holding things is much easier that way. But All right, grab it and go. Yeah, there we go. I did it, I did it, Mom, I did it. Okay. Bring this, pull this down. We don't want it to be too big. But I do want to make sure that we are in the valley of the, of the um, scallop, not on the, there, that's so pretty. The other thing you can do with your stamping blends, you guys, <laughs> you always want to iron it, yeah. Um, the other thing that you can do with your stamping blends is you can color your ribbon. So if you wanted a Highland Heather ribbon, you could take your white crinkled ribbon and color it. Because they're alcohol-based markers, they won't run or bleed. See? 
and now my crinkle ribbon is any color I want it to be. That's another benefit of the Stampin' Blends. But anyway, I was talking about my Stampin' Blends Tic-Tac-Toe Club, and um, I created it for a couple of local Stampin' friends who wanted to get blends, and so what they would do is kind of that same thing. They would purchase like five, five pair of Stampin' Blends each month, and then they would mark on their tic-tac-toe board, which had slots for products, they would mark off and get one of those products each time. And then when they filled their board, they got to choose a free stamp set too. So it was like, wow, it was like a real, a real benefit for them. <laughs> All right, and then this is going to go here. This might have to go lower, you guys. I'm not sure. That's one nice thing about the ribbon not tying super tightly, because when this is going to come back over, oh, I think that'll be okay. Because I am going to have a greeting somewhere. I'm not sure. So I'm going to have a greeting, so hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I wonder, maybe I want to bring this down. Do I have to have a sentiment on the front? I could put my sentiment right here. Yeah, I'll do that. This is not going to raise up, but my flower is, I think. Yeah, this DSP is so awesome. Oh. Linda Worth, no, no. <laughs> and this is going to raise up. Boy, I have to tell you, I think I colored my flowers just beautifully. Shaded in so nicely. Boy, oh boy. I was under pressure, right? Oftentimes I just color so fast and stuff. So there's my flower. I actually think I like this up more. Oh no, I can do it, hold on. Now I'm thinking I do want the ribbon to be on the, the um, yeah, I'll leave it. So there's that and there's that. I need some gems. Am I going to use the in color gems, which are the ones that being in the in color club you would be getting free? Do I want to use these? So, why not? My phone is buzzing at me. What does my phone want? What does my phone want of me? We have little ones and big ones. Uh-oh, it doesn't want to stay down now. There we go. here there we are I might have to just put my greeting on the inside because I just like that but I don't know let's we'll see because I'll cover up the flower right oh thank you Victoria so you guys should I put a greeting on the outside somehow the only thing I could do would be to put something kind of over it would have to be over the flowers and I don't really want to do that so let's, let's do for the inside. Let's do that. So one of the greetings I really like, I mean, it's just, it's not, it's just a, it's a sentiment, right? Where is it? Here it is. Another thing that's happening with Stampin' Up's photopolymer um, stamp sets is they're putting a picture of the stamps on the inside on the inside of the case 
so that once you have you use you can just put it right onto your case you don't have to keep pulling apart the papers you can just do that which I think is just fantastic love it what will they think of next I like this thanks so I'm gonna use it and we are going to stamp in I guess we'll stamp in memento ink because the flowers are outlined in memento ink right there it is isn't that a great thanks I really like that now the other thing I want to do is I'm going to put a couple little flowers on the inside oops I have it right here and see I can't really even see my things very well here right there's these cute little flowers and I'm gonna put one of those on there or a couple of them on there and so I would want them what color would I want these in I'm going to go with the Highland Heather Because the purple is just so pretty so we'll go ahead and we'll stamp that let's see how they stamp oh they're fun they're just little just little ones there those are actually the flowers that you would stamp um, this is a two-step stamp so when I stamp this I could then use another color stamp this right into here because that lines up with that this flower right here goes on to that. This flower here goes on to here. These little ones go with these and these. And then the leaves do the same thing. So you can use your coloring tools and color them in once you've stamped, or you can simply use your stamp pads and fill them in that way. That's for quick, quick stamping there. The two, that way, the two-step stamping, which I love. There's nothing wrong with that. That's just beautiful, quick, and easy, right? Boy, I keep getting a little beep beeps on my phone, you guys. There we go. Let's go ahead and put it on the inside. I'm gonna to have to go for another walk today. I went for one in the middle of my work day. I'm gonna do another one. There we are, thanks. And there it is, look at that. So, a few things that we learned today. Oh, wait, I have this piece, oh yes. This was a piece that when I cut my layer for the front of the card, And it gives me this little strip. Uh-huh, there we go. I like that. Um, we learned that we could color our ribbons with stamp and blend markers because they're alcohol based. We learned that our stamp pads do have labels that you can put on the end so that when you store them in your little stamp and storage container, the label sticks out for you to see easily. We learned that I have some awesome, awesome loves already. <laughs> but there's that. And then there's this one. Oh, so that's the Quiet Meadow Bundle and this is the Hand Penned Petals Bundle. Oh my gosh. Anyway, just lovely. Oh, so what else can I do? What else can I tell you? That's all I can tell you right now. <laughs> I'll show you again those dies for these particular bundles. This is the hand, the penned flower dies. And these are the quiet meadow, the meadows dies. Just beautiful. It's interesting, the hand penned petals bundle is $46.75 and the quiet meadow is $53. And I can kind of figure out why. Um, so there we go. All right, you guys, so this Friday, oh, I know, it's just Quiet Meadow is really great. 
So Friday, look up my Facebook, well, look up my blog. You'll see it on my Facebook post as well. I'll be putting out my um, April card sketch challenge, and it has to do with inspiration. So um, I told you mine is going to be uh, my bedspread on my bed, um, that it's inspiring me already. And so it's not necessarily a, 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 a layout challenge. You'll get to tell what uh, inspired you and then share, share your card with me. And what am I going to give away this month? I don't know. I'll have to figure that out for Friday. <laughs> so anyway, well, you guys, if you haven't, um, you can check out my YouTube channel, Mary's Card Cafe. Um, I know some of you follow me on Facebook. If you don't, go ahead and follow me. Uh, you can also my blog. Um, it's maryblocker.blogspot.com, but I always share it to Facebook, so you'll see it there. But anyway, you guys, the, the sunny weather had just inspired me with these brand new upcoming products. May 4th is the time it's available for customers. And um, if you don't have a demonstrator, I'm more than happy to share um, anything with you. Again, Double Loyalty Bucks ends tomorrow. And if you need a catalog, just message me. I can mail one out to you. Um, unless you already order from me because then it's already coming out to you. Okay? All right, you guys. Thanks so much for joining me. Until next time, happy stamping!